Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you and we're going to be talking about a bunch of the random stuff that's going on right now. Definitely not good, uh, some things that we need to bring to your attention. Of course, in addition to all the things that we've already had to bring to your attention, this is even more on top of that. We've got a special guest on our channel here today. This is Johnny with 180 Second Ideas. You may also know him as Gun Drama Johnny. Okay. Gun yeah, Gossip. Gun <laughs> Gossip. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. Glad to be here. Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah you came all the way from the uh, from the mountains. Came all the way from the mountains in Tennessee, Tennessee and uh, came down here. We've been having a good time, and uh, y'all are my people. Absolutely. Yeah, different state, but you. the same people. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, we weren't going to turn down an opportunity to have Johnny on the channel here. You guys know he's got some uh, wit for days, and uh, <laughs> he's got some really fun stuff going on with his channel. You should check it out. He's a good guy. Uh, let's get into kind of the beans and bullets here. I took some notes. Yes, I know how to write. Getting on to the serious, uh, serious point here, there's definitely some things going on, and a video was recently brought to my attention by one of my viewers, thank you very much, by the way, uh, from Congressman, Congressman Thomas Massey out of Kentucky. And in that video, he's basically warning everybody of some impending uh, doom uh, that's coming down the pipeline from Congress, and they are about to try to literally push through this H.R. 4909, which is called the Stop School Violence Act, and it's basically a Trojan horse for gun control because what they're doing is they're grouping the fixed NICs into that bill. So what they're doing is, oh, well, you know, oh, well, why could you, how could you vote against this, right? With a name like that, why would you vote against it? But really you're voting for gun control and they're using this as a Trojan horse to achieve gun control measures, which is pretty crooked. Yeah, and I think putting the, anything that you time you put how is it stop school shooting act yes. it's about kids it's about stopping violence in schools you i mean how do you vote against that and how do you go back to your district for these guys and these women that are going back and they voted against that i mean that's tough and i think that's a uh, i mean it's a little bit of a marketing ploy putting that in there and then putting all that other stuff in there it's unfortunate i think that we've got one guy that we, that we can hold up right now maybe this week congressman massey to say wow we've got one guy on our side at least i feel that i've got one guy on my side and it feels like it's thin yeah, it is a thin line of people who are legitimately there on Capitol Hill trying to do the right thing. And Congressman Massey, thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. That, you know, that stuff is very important. We need people like this congressman on Capitol Hill blowing the whistle when these things are going on. Because, I mean, have you seen any media coverage about this? Have you seen anybody talking about this? Anybody mentioning it? No, because they want it to be one of those sweep it under the rug. Let's just push it through. I believe it's already made out of committee. I mean, it's moving through the legislative process very quickly, and they know that. They're trying to sweep this under the rug because I think they have a recess plan soon. So they're trying to just, all right, well, before we go play golf, let's just, you know, mm -hmm. brush this little unpleasantry off. And they're doing it in this form. Now, okay, the fixed NIC system. We know that the current NIC system is not even really being taken seriously by the FBI and, and other, you know, administrative agencies as it begins to be anyway. Okay, so... The fixed NICs, the problem with it, the main prob problem with it, and I'll put a link um, down in the description box below, or if you go over to our Facebook page, I shared Cong Congressman Massey's video on my Facebook page, so you can go and, and watch it for yourself and see what he has to say about it, which I would strongly recommend, because he lays the facts out really, really simple, but to paraphrase uh, what the Congressman told us, it uh, says that basically right now, okay, and this was a bill that was passed back in 2008, uh, was an original uh, sort of veteran slash NICS bill that put this in place. So like basically if you go to the VA and you tell the VA if you're a veteran that you can't manage your own finances. So like basically let's say that, I don't know, you're disabled and somebody else has to help you manage your finances, pay your bills for you. That is enough of a reason where now they're saying, oh, you can't own a gun. They're wanting to add that, uh, add something worse in. So right now we know that Congress is basically ignoring the pleas for many veterans uh, to, you know, get this crap wiped off of their record in this bad way, and they're be being deprived of due process, okay? Mm -hmm. It's, all right, we take the guns, and then if they really want to pursue it bad enough, then we, we let them fight it out in court. And that's the wrong answer. These people fight for you. They die for you. They risk their lives for you. And you're going to throw them under the bus? Well, as if that's not bad enough, Congress has been ignoring it because Congressman Ma Massey was also mentioning that one of the things that they've been trying to put through is a Second Amendment Veterans Protection Act. Okay, so protecting veterans' Second Amendment rights. And of course, you know, that, that rarely gets anywhere. Now, when they did put that through, it, got, it made it out of uh, committee. 
it made it uh, through the House, and it got stonewalled in the Senate because, you know, it just ran into too many How people. How do we get to the point where we have to have a bill to protect people's Second Amendment rights? Like, we're having to have rights to protect our rights. Right. And how do we get to this point? Or a law to protect yeah. your right when something's a right. And that's a very good point, Johnny. I mean, it, it, it is very messed up that we're talking about our veterans here, guys. This is not just anybody. And the thing is, this should not even be a thing with any person to begin with. But it has to be our veterans. So why is Fix Nix, which is currently being pushed through in 4909, and definitely oppose it, call all of your... You know, all of, of your representatives up and tell them that you will vote them out if they support this bill. You have got to make sure they understand that they're really voting on an anti-gun piece of legislation. So what does Fix Nix actually do that differs from what's currently out there now? Well, the major problem with Fix Nix is it provides financial incentive to these agencies for reporting uh, our veterans. So imagine a bill that provides financial incentive bonuses to people to enforce something that probably is already needs to be enforced. In, well, it doesn't need to be enforced, but we're talking about what's on the books and what they're supposed to do. They're basically saying, oh, well, we'll throw a bunch of money your way. It's basically bribery. Okay. Follow the money trail. Follow the money trail. Mm -hmm. And it's a very crooked way to treat our veterans. Incent you know, giving incentive to an agency to go, well, man, that money sure does look nice. Well, I tell you what. Well, let's see. Well, this list here, Johnny, I don't know. It was a little questionable. Maybe some of these people should be on there. Maybe not. Well, none of them do. But from their perspective, you know, all right, well, this person, eh, that's, that's kind of a thin line. You know what? Report, 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 report. All right, I'll take the money. So it's like they want them to just en masse report veterans knowing that it, it's not going to stick in the long run but they're doing it to de deprive people of the rights. So what you're saying is the bigger the list is, the more money that funnels in. Yes. So they have financial motivation There's to increase There's financial the motivation that exists. If this, if this 4909 is passed, it is literally bribing uh, people in these agencies to, be more, to, to report more people. And you know that it's going to cause erroneous reporting to occur because they're going to be like, oh, well, they're just chasing the dollar. And that's a very, very crooked way to treat our veterans. Our VA hospitals are already doing a crappy job of taking care of our veterans. Uh, you know, any you, you guys know, if you're a veteran, you've had to go to the VA for something, a checkup or a hearing test or something. It is literally an act of Congress to get in and out of the VA without, you know, tying up three days of your time and a bunch mm -hmm. of phone calls and the runaround. So it's a very crooked way to treat people, and especially the people that have that have fought and died for you and have 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 bared wounds that are not only you know, real wounds, but emotional wounds too, that they'll have with them for the rest of their lives. You, you ask them to do that. And that's not even, that's all besides a point where they're talking about, oh, well, we need to change the age to buy a long gun to 21. Think about that. So you're good enough at the age of 18 to go overseas and go do the job, and they're going to give you an M16 and an M9 Beretta and a Ma Deuce, and they're going to give you a 120 millimeter mortar and tell you over there to uh, go over there and do a job. But, oh, well, oh, these people are trying to hurt us. We have to arm all these people, send them over there to go fight them. Oh, oh, go fight them. We don't want them here. Well, then they come back. Oh, well, those people are dangerous. And they can vote. You can vote at 18, it, but you can't own a long yeah. gun. I mean, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. Mm -hmm. You just can't do it. I mean, what, what do you think about that? Well, here's, How they're treating veterans. I think it's, it's and I'm not a veteran, and I'm very open about that, but I've got, you know, deep feelings because, you know, as an American, I think we all should have deep feelings. And that's not a line. I mean, I really have a strong opinion. We talked a little about that last night, a sure. really strong opinion about veterans. And, you know, I think it's deeper than just a respect. I mean, because we all respect veterans, or we should. But for me, I, I have deep feelings about vets. And... I think it's important, I think it's critical, and I think it's unfortunate. My question is, how many guys, because it's a nightmare to get through the VA, how many guys are just not getting treated at all? Yeah. I mean, if you've got something that's life-threatening, you have to go in, but what about guys that just need just a checkup, or guys that are struggling? Yeah. How many are not getting what they need because of politics and red tape? Well, the politics and the red tape that are surrounded in things like Fix Nicks, it, it basically what it is, it's, it's society saying that you're not good enough to be with us. And do you realize how much more that pushes those veterans that might need some help in the wrong direction because they're scared that they're going to lose their rights or they're scared that they're going to be pushed into some corner and treated like a substandard part of our community? Absolutely, you know, not. That that's that's not acceptable. That's not the country that we've created and that we've worked for. And you know, the fact that they're even wanting to do this is treasonous and it's by very nature. I feel. 
because you, you can judge a country really, really well by how they treat their veterans. So what happens when our veterans start being treated as substandard people? You're going to create a you're going to create sort of an, an ecosystem where people are like, well, screw it. If you're going to treat me like crap, you're going to take my guns, you're going to take my rights away, you're going to do all this. Then why even serve? People are going to be like, well, why bother serving? Why bother? Why sacrifice? Why risk my life when my country's going to turn their back on me? That's how a lot of people are probably feeling right now. And there's a sense of betrayal. You know that there's veterans out there. That you know, they, they mention the VA that they can't manage their own affairs, and then all of a sudden they lost their gun rights. Do you realize how that probably feels to be sitting there and thinking, at a time when I need to be protected the most, that, that my country is going to disarm me? Because what? So I, I can be trusted to go overseas and do this job. When I come back, I can't be trusted? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. If anything, the veterans of our country are more qualified to own a gun than anybody else. I know I'm going to catch some flack by saying that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if anything, we're more qualified to handle guns than you are. How do so we get, how do I we don't get want to hear point, it, you know? How do we get to the point where you have to stop and say, I'm going to catch flack for suggesting that people that have military training are doggone good with weapons and they are safe and reliable and trustworthy folks. And then you already know that you're going to have people, people, people that get can't, upset. People can't handle the truth. But the truth of the matter is, who would you rather have? have I mean, and look, I, I'm not trying to spin this like... We're better than anybody. It's not that. But, I mean, come on. These people are trained. I mean, why should they not have guns? They obviously have way more training than any of you. So what's the problem? Why take those people's guns away? It's just the stupidest thing ever. Uh, so anyway, that's one thing that is, in, in, the, in the crux of this video, that's something very important that I wanted to cover, is the H.R. 4909. Do not look at that bill and go, oh, well, the Stop uh, School Violence Act. Oh, that sounds so, so fuzzy and carefree. It is, it is anti-gun legislation in disguise, and you have to stress to all your representatives, do not support it. I know that you look at it, and it's in black and white, and you go, oh my God, if I don't vote for this, then I'm not supporting right. you know, your this. You're pro-school violence. Exactly. Yeah. So don't let them mull you into that corner. Guys, we're in the lead here. I mean, we have representatives in the House, the Senate. The presidency, I mean, wh that's why we elect these people is to protect our rights. Do not cave in on this. Do not give them an inch. They'll take a mile. Let me ask you this. For the average viewer that's out there, like me, and I watch I watch your channel religiously. Thank you. We, we see this and we know, okay, H.R. 4909 is bad. What do I do? I know that you've mentioned, you know, maybe email, call, contact senators, contact. I know right now it's congressmen sure. or congresswomen. But what can we do besides that? Because I think we're here in YouTube culture, my opinion is often instead of to take action, because people have these feelings, all right, I need to work on this, I need to talk about this, I need to get the word out. What do they do? They go to another channel and leave comments in the comment section. Right. We've got to step outside of YouTube comment section and going from two-way site to two-way site. What can the average person do other than contacting congressmen and congresswomen? Well, that's a good question. I think that what a lot of people should really be encouraged to do is to bring this conversation to all the people around them. So, you know, don't just share it within your respective 2A communities, you know, your friends and people that you know are, are pro-gun. I mean, that's why like we put this stuff out on Facebook, we promote it, we promote it on YouTube. We, we don't make these videos exclusive just for 2A people. We make them for anybody who's willing to listen to what we have to say. And I would like to think that we try to have a very level-headed opinion on this kind of stuff. We don't let emotion get in the way. We just try to state the facts and just look at it for the way it is. Now, if an anti-gun person watches my channel, say they stumble across it, and say they're informed, it may be, dare I say, enlightened, then great, more power to him. But we, we are here to report what we see and how we see it. Now, the average person, don't be afraid to have those conversations with people in your circles. You know, If you know a friend of yours is anti-gun, spread the truth. St spread what you know is right and tell them, You know, just respectfully uh, argue the point or debate the point as to why you think that they should also join you in the fight to call and you know obviously you know these representatives need to be held accountable and that's very difficult to do in states where you know people know that their elected representatives are a bunch of turds and that they're not going to do the right thing no matter what they say they're going to ignore the emails they're going to ignore the phone calls and ultimately we have to fix this at the ballot box and you know midterms are coming up and if somebody if, if this is a good litmus test for if something bad happens with H.R. 4909, any Republican that votes for this, vote them out. That's the only way you can do it is, is vote with your feet, use the ballot box, 
Spread the positive words of the Second Amendment. Spread what you know is right. Try to look at things from an a honest and straightforward and logical point of view. And I think you'll find that most people will, will tend to, to resonate with that a okay. bit. That's my, my opinion. I think it's tough. And then doing the Capitol, you know, uh, rallies and things is a good. Absolutely, good we talked. We've talked before on. I've talked with some other guys about this. When you go to do going to do rallies, I mean, maybe, I mean, people all have their own style, but maybe wear a suit rather than an AR-15 strapped to your back. I mean, right. maybe consider, and that's a that's a pretty big example, but maybe consider how we get the message out there. Yeah. Uh, just the fact that I watched you this morning sit down and actually wa and get some research and actually listen to some videos and you took notes and you're educating yourself, that goes so much further than banging away in a YouTube channel saying any any uh, laws are anti-constitutional. Anti, anti and even just doing homework and being educated, being well-spoken, it's important. I think so. And I, th I think that, you know, like my grandma used to say, you catch more uh, flies with sugar than you do, well... I'm not going to say it, but but the the truth of the matter is yes, you you, you will always do better. Like I've told people before, if you're going to write your representatives or call your representatives or email them or anything you're going to do to try to make sure they understand how where you feel on a given matter, don't cold call them. Take a take a notepad and just think about what you want to say mm -hmm. and just prepare a statement. Write a short statement. And if you have to, just read the statement off the paper. You don't have to be put on the spot. They're the ones that's put on the spot. They're the ones that's unprepared because they don't know you're going to call. Do your homework. Get everything together. Make a, a positive but respectful but stern statement. Be a professional, and you'll get, more, you'll get way further that way. They will understand that you are a person who is to be reckoned with. You are a voter. You are a person that is going to end their career if they don't do what you say. You are their constituent. And if you voted Republican, you voted them people in, then you are their constituent. And if you tell them not to support 4909, trust me, enough of you get on the phone, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, this is we need to stay away from this. So there's 4909. Here's the other one that was just put forth on 2-26-2018 by Ciceline. We might have mentioned this one specifically. It might have been the one where they were just talking about uh, rate increasing devices and stuff. This is HR 5087, and it is actually a full-blown assault weapons ban of 2018. That's literally what they're calling it. Um, and it's basically the same repackaged thing that we've been dealing with forever. Uh, there's not really much point in going over too many of the details because, guys, pretty much if it's semi-auto, they want it. They list, like, over 250 different guns by name. Uh, guys, they want them. Well, they okay. want them all. They want but them all. But I think the easy step right now, because of Florida and because of, of Vegas, the easy step right now for them is to go after the semi-automatics. High capacity. I agree. And it's it's highly unfortunate uh, that this is what we're... Okay, so the one that we talked about in this previous video that Chad and I did was HR 3999. That's the one where they're talking about, you know, let's just say bump stocks, essentially. So the big three, this is what I've got written down here. The big three is HR 3999. HR 5087 and HR 4909. You must contact your representatives right now, especially on 4909. Let them know that you will not accept them failing you in any stretch of the imagination ever. You must fight this tooth and nail because they're they're wanting to take what they perceive as an inch, and I know it's an overused statement, but they're trying to take a mile. And 4909 is a is a poison pill. Okay, that's literally what it is. It, it looks nice on the outside. All right, it's going to get rid of my headache. I'm going to eat it. Oh, it's got some nasty things inside of it. So they're trying to literally play on the, <laughs> they're trying to play on tragedy and they're trying to play on people's emotions and they're trying to wrap it, they're trying to wrap something that's poison in with something that has the appearance of being uh, good. And of course, remember, the, the Stop School Violence Act has the support of all the usual suspects. Feinstein and Pelosi and, and all these all these crooked politicians that want to take your rights. Okay, it has their support. So bear that in mind. If a bill has their support, you know it can't be good for the Second Amendment. I think it's unfortunate. You know, those boys a long time ago died in the streets in in Boston. They died in the fields in on Long Island, present day Long Island, and died to get those words on that paper. Yeah. And here we sit a couple hundred years later having to fight again but this time it's from within. It's just unfortunate. I appreciate you uh, taking this stand. It's a big deal. Well, and we've got some other things to kind of talk about too. And so those bills, guys, if you do nothing else today, please, please contact your reps, especially on 4909. 
So let's talk a little bit about, so it was, I don't even really follow popular culture that much, but it was what, the Grammys the other day? The Grammys. No, so, with the, uh, let's, let's, let's call them the Oscars this year. The Oscars. We'll call them the Oscars. Was it the Oscars? Yeah, it was the Oscars. It was the Oscars. I don't yeah. know, what's the difference? Yeah, one's for one thing and one's for another. It's right. a whole bunch of so rich people. So it was people. the Oscar. It's a bunch of rich people patting each other on the back. Okay. So didn't the Oscars have like what among the lowest ratings ever this year? It was uh, abysmal. I didn't even know it was going on. I, I don't even really know what's. I guess the Oscars is what for movies and then the Grammys Oscars for is music. for movie. Yeah, the Oscars okay. are the Academy Awards, and right. they took place last week, and they had abysmal ratings. All right. Wonder why. And how many police did they have? They there? had, I believe, it was uh, over five hundred armed guards, and, and they had a, full what perimeter. What kind of guns did they have? Well, scary ones and black ones, probably. They were fifteens. They, they had dogs seen. too. Assault dogs. Assault dogs. They did. And did the dogs have guns? I think the dogs had guns. Yeah, armed, armed to the teeth. And it's funny they had a full uh, perimeter all the way around the facility, and then get up on stage and want to lecture me about my rights. It's funny how that works, isn't it? It's, 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 that's horrible that that's a society we live in where these people think that they're above you. And that's what we have to remember. The, these elite and these people think that their safety and their livelihood outweighs your ability to protect yourself. They want to disarm you, but they want to have 500 armed guards with M16s outside of their, uh, their, their little thing so that, you know, where they can all pat each other on the back and not have to worry about the little peon nobody coming in and doing anything. So their safety is important to them. You better believe. So they, they, they like guns. The anti-gun crowd loves guns. Mm -hmm. They just don't want you having guns. So I felt that that was a pretty important distinction to make in this video because don't think just because these people are, are voting towards all this anti-gun stuff that they're anti-gun. Oh, no, they're pro-gun. They're pro-them having a yeah. gun. They just don't want you to be armed. So Very pro the government having gun. And, you know, yeah. hypocrisy is palpable. And I'm a hypocrite in some ways. I mean, there's things I say and I do do one thing and say another. So we're all hypocrites. But this is things that matter. I mean, how many of the congressmen and congresswomen and senators have walls around their houses? Yeah. But God forbid that we build a wall to uh, keep Texas safe. What's a, uh, what's a bigger... What's, what's a bigger travesty to make here, okay? So if you are anti-gun, then vote with your feet. Don't carry a gun. Don't, don't accept armed security. If you're a politician who thinks so strongly that nobody should have guns, then turn in your security detail right now. You get no security detail. Don't carry a gun. Vote with your feet. Be the change in the world you want to see. See how well it works out for you. If you're some movie star or whatever that hates guns and thinks that we're all a bunch of uneducated, dumb rednecks that shouldn't be armed and that all of us rednecks are just hillbillies and you know, all us rednecks and veterans are just hillbillies in the woods with too many guns. Clinging then, to their guns. Clinging to their guns. Yep. Then, then why don't you just vote with your feet and take all those 500 armed officers with those ARs off the red carpet. Just, okay, well, if guns aren't good, good enough for you, then don't have armed people around you. Like, make a statement. Make a true statement. But it does not support your position when you pay 500 Brutuses with ARs to guard you and your, your so important life. You, you have no leg to stand on in terms of an argument when you're, you're being protected by 500 people. Basically a small army. I mean, that's just our perspective. I mean, of course, our opinion doesn't matter because we're just nobodies, but... Hillbillies. Yeah, we're just hillbillies. But, all right, so something else I want to mention quickly, and this is just the last talking point. Um, the NRA seems to have changed direction on the bump stock thing. Uh, they released a statement not long ago. Um, in fact, I believe uh, Tim with the Military Arms Channel shared that statement over on his Facebook page. That's um, how I got word of it, and I was like, okay, cool. And, and Tim was fair. You know, Tim wasn't saying, hey, we love the NRA now, or I love the NRA, or yes, we should all jump on the NRA bandwagon. But Tim... To be fair, gave credit where it's due. It's like, hey, maybe now we are seeing some form of change from the NRA. Maybe they've caved into the pressure. Obviously, they should, because if their base contacts them enough and says, look, we don't want you to support this, then absolutely. So, in, in other news, the NRA appears to have changed the direction. They do not support making a long gun age 21. They do not support bump stocks or assault weapons bans. And, uh, yeah, they do not support fixed nicks, from what I can see. So, Isn't this good that the NRA... Is supporting guns. Isn't that, wasn't that a good well, press release? Yeah, isn't that what they're supposed to do? What a, what a nice day. What a good week we're having that here. That would have been nice six months ago yeah, when it would we have really been. needed it. Now, let me ask you this. You've covered sure. a lot of stuff here. Yeah, we've gone no, through, it's, it's you've gone lot. through politics. We've gone through veterans affairs. We've gone through yeah. finances. We've gone through a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. For you to take a really hard stand, which I appreciate, what are the consequences for you? Are there consequences for taking a stand this hard? 
Consequences? Yeah. Will people will people whine? Will people chirp at you? Will you hear from people? Does this make people upset? Do you hear from the quote unquote left? I don't like dividing the world into left and right, but will you hear I don't from? Because yeah, because it's flu, yeah. it's gray. Yeah. But will you hear from from people? Likely so. Uh, likely so. I mean, most of the most of the feed. That's a good question. Most of the feedback that we get on these types of videos is pretty positive. Um, you know, we're always going to have our score of haters, people that don't uh, understand our side of the situation, and that's okay. They, they're entitled to an opinion. We, we would never, you know, try to stifle that opinion by any stretch. Uh, but I would say more people than not contact us and go, hey, thank you for fighting for our rights. Thank you for bringing this stuff out there where we can, you know, put it on a level playing field for people to, to bring in. I know that in many cases we're kind of preaching to the choir here. I know that folks watching this, likely you're probably pro-gun already. Um, It'd but be a you lot guys easier. are the reason why we can get this stuff taken care of. It'd be a lot easier just to go out in the field and melt down guns and shoot targets and say, wow. So I think... I, well, yeah. Yeah, there's a price to pay for this, and uh, people get upset. People have opinions. They do. And opinions are, are what they are. And uh, I mean, yeah, we, we would love to do nothing more than just melt down guns and review guns and have all kind of fun. But these kind of videos have to get made. I can't sit on the sideline. It's not fair for me to essentially make a living uh, on the Second Amendment, but not support the Second Amendment. Why would I have this big voice and all these people that care about what we have to say, why would I not use that to better our, our overall position? And it has nothing to do with you know making a living or doing any of that. All of that aside, it is an inalienable right that we all have, and, and we feel strongly that if you're going to use firearms, whether you make a living, whether you don't, if you defend yourself, whatever, if you're just a hobbyist, doesn't matter what level, if you are a firearms person and you love guns, then guess what? You are involved in a political fight. You, if you own a gun, have to understand that you, there are many, many people that think you don't have the right to, and they want to take, take it away, and they want to take your guns. And uh, I feel it's strong to use the voice that we have for good. And I feel like we try to, to enact some positive change. I mean, like the, uh, the, car the car National Carry Bill. And also the the shush thing, you know, the whole uh, you know that whole the the suppressor bill. Okay, right. Chad and I fought really hard putting out multiple videos to try. You know, we got it out of committee, and then of course stonewalled. Right, because of Vegas. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we should be picking through pro gun legislation, like p ordering off a dang Taco Bell menu. I know I've said that before, but literally, why are we even having this conversation? Why is this even occurring? Uh, it's so silly. Why we even have to have this discussion? We should be talking about, well, last week we got this program bill passed, and here we go, everything's looking great. But no, it's, it's all doom and gloom. Yeah, we should be melting down guns in a field and not having to deal with this. Should be. Right. But we cannot stay asleep. You know, we have to have our ears to the ground like the Indians used to do. you got to you have your ear to the ground and listen for the buffalo. So uh, what we're doing is we're listening for buffalo. And in this case, um, you know, we definitely... Sorry, I'm, I'm so unorganized here. You know... Thomas Massey out of Kentucky. Thank you very much, Congressman, because uh, those are the kind of people we need to get elected. Those are the people, like he's blowing the whistle because his job, he took an oath to defend and support the Constitution of the United States until the day he dies. When you take that oath, that's a serious oath. That oath follows you till the day that you're put in the ground. And if you're going to take that oath and you're going to take it seriously, you're going to lay your hand on that Bible and you're going to call yourself an American and you're going to defend to the death the Constitution of the United States, that is what you have to do. It has nothing to do with how he may feel about the Second Amendment. He is obligated to fight for the Second Amendment as a part of our constitutional rights. You, when you put your hand over that Bible and you take that oath, it is an oath that you take to the day you die. And, you know, and, and that's good. You know, we need more people like Thomas Massey. So, all hands on deck. All hands on deck. I mean, why are 30... Congressman, not making the same video that Mr. Massey's making. Re Why is Massey the only one doing it? Re-election. They're scared. Right. Always on campaign. I guarantee Always you, pushing I guarantee for the next you Thomas Massey's getting re-elected. Promise you that. Promise you that. So, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Uh, we graciously appreciate all of our viewers and all the folks that sit through these videos. Guys, make sure you go check out Johnny's channel, 180 Second Ideas, and uh, check out all, all the stuff he's got going on. We'll probably have some videos with me over on his channel, well, Chad and I on his channel uh, in the future. But um, check him out. He's a good guy. Uh, got a lot of good ideas going on. And uh, also, we appreciate all the support that we get from you guys. Uh, you're on Patreon as well, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to support Johnny on Patreon, go on over there and donate a few bucks to help out. Because, guys, our voices 
are being fought against every single day. I mean, we, we are among enemies here. Mm -hmm. And every dollar we get in terms of contributions, it helps, guys. Uh, I, I hate to e-bag. We're not e-bagging. But if, if you love the content and you want to help us out, you know, consider a Patreon donation or maybe purchasing a T-shirt to help, you know, all the funds that we make off T-shirts help us to be able to put this kind of stuff out, as well as man can sales and any other things like that we may do. So anything like that that you ever do for content creators like Johnny, Tim at Military Arms Channel, Dave over there at Plankster, Mike at Mr. Guns and Gear, Yankee Marshall, doesn't matter. Whoever's out here and is putting out good content, if you consume it and you love it and you really feel in your heart that they that what they say, you know, represents you, then consider helping them out with a little donation uh, because this stuff takes, I mean, we were talking earlier, Johnny, about the amount of time it takes you mm -hmm. to put together these videos. I mean, I know we, we take a lot of time to do it. We're not tooting our own horn, but guys, it, it is a very big undertaking and all of the funds are graciously appreciated. Think of it like a tip jar. If you love what we're doing, consider a tip. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, man. That was yeah, fun. Pal. Appreciate you. Thank all you. All right, yeah. So this has been Gun Gripes. Guys, thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, gosh, we don't have to make too many more of these dang videos, but believe me, if this, if this garbage comes down the pipeline, we're going to do it. So uh, thank you for tuning in today. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon.